For today's example, I've drawn a very basic suspension system. We've got the tire, the steering knuckle, lower control arm, a strut spring, and these are the bolts that hold the strut to the steering knuckle. Normally, there'll be a very basic nut and bolt combo like this. However, this car needs an alignment and it needs a little bit of camber added to it. There's not a whole lot of areas to work with for adjusting the camber on this car. You could get an adjustable lower control arm, but that's real expensive. You could get an adjustable bushing, but those are hard to find and they aren't very reliable unless you can hold them in place. So what most people end up going with is a cam bolt like this. What you get here is a basic nut, a special washer, and the bolt itself. This is the bolt itself, and there's a cam lobe that comes off as a bigger circle. The original bolt, one of these bolts is definitely thicker than the other. In fact, the threaded part of this bolt has about the same diameter as this right here. So to adjust the camber today, we're gonna take out one of these bolts, this one right here, and replace it with this cammed bolt. How we do that is we start out with this bolt, we'll put this washer on, Note that this outside tab sticks upward and the inside tab sticks downward. We'll slide this through the strut and the steering knuckle and then put the nut on the other side. So if you wanted no adjustment at all out of this bolt, you line up this washer tab here with the part that sticks out the most on this cam lobe. To get the most out of it, you would line this up on the opposite side of the cam lobe. There's also some fine adjustment in between. I'll draw that little tab here so it's easier to see. That mark is this inside tab, and this is the outside tab. So in this scenario, the tab here on the washer is going to push against the strut component, and the cam lobe is going to push against the steering knuckle component. See how one circle moves in and out of the other circle? Let's head over to this example. I'm going to line up the cam bolt the same way. This cam lobe is facing this direction. The tab is over here, and the cam is pushing the green steering knuckle portion, but it's not pulling it in entirely. This bolt is still holding itself in place. The top of the steering knuckle is being pulled in towards the car. You'll end up with negative camber. They are measuring the top portion of the tire, so if you have what you generally assume to be camber, it's negative camber. You don't want positive camber. I'll show you the opposite way. This one has the cam lobe facing the other direction, so it's pushing out on the top, which means the top of the wheel is going to be pushed that way, and you'll end up with positive camber. This whole time we've been working with either two standard bolts or a cam bolt and a standard bolt below it. But if one bolt doesn't do the job, you can actually install two bolts. With these being five degrees, that's an exaggeration. This one would be 10 compared to these being five. So if your car needs to have a little bit of adjustability in the camber department, you can get some of these bolts and replace the basic ones you have in your struts. These bolts, even when doubled up, only let you add or take away a few degrees of camber, so if you're looking for that really heavy camber look, you're not gonna get it with these bolts. You'll also wanna read the directions on yours because these are a different size bolt than what comes with the car, so it's gonna have a different torque spec as well. Hopefully, this made adding a few degrees of camber to your car just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video. Got a pretty cool one all about relays. I've also got one explaining why bleeding the brakes in the right order isn't as straightforward as it used to be.